So the PM yesterday told any potential rioters that the authorities will be watching you. However, despite the warnings, it seems a weekend of planned protests have begun across the UK. In Sunderland tonight, there was a standoff between police and protesters outside a mosque where officers had stones and beer cans thrown at them. There are continued reports that an overturned car has been set on fire, while police in riot gear have come under sustained attack as rioters set off fire extinguishers against them. In his Downing Street press conference, Sakir Starmer raged at far-right plotters, which he said were moving from community to community. But Reform UK leader Nigel Farage claimed that Starmer is blind to a bigger issue at play. No, the far-right are a reaction to fear, to discomfort, to unease that is out there shared by tens of millions of people. Let me be clear. I don't support street violence. I don't support thuggery in any way at all. But I'm worried not just about the events in Southport, but about societal decline that is happening in our country. So did Sir Keir Starmer fail to properly address British people's concerns? Let me know your thoughts. GBnews.com forward slash your say or tweet us at GB News and do vote in the poll. Going head to head tonight, our former police sergeant, Harry Tangi, and director of the Sanctuary Foundation, Dr. Krish Kandia. Uh, Dr. Kandia, thank you so much for joining us. Do you think that uh, Sir Keir Starmer, the new prime minister, struck the right tone? Was he was he right to mention the far right and extremists? I think he did strike the right tone. I think the main thing he did was to support the police who have been incredibly brave. First of all, they were the ones that stopped the terrible attack that killed these three beautiful children. And then very quickly, they had to defend themselves from being attacked by a gang. I think thugs is the word that's been used, hooligans. Uh, they've been attacking hundreds of police officers around the country. And what the Prime Minister said is he wanted the police forces to work more closely together. That makes a lot of sense to me. He's also said okay. that he's going to go after the disinformation that's been spread online. And some of our well-known MPs who have spoken up for the far right have actually been retweeting wrong uh, information. Dr. They've Candia, who, who, are those, who are those MPs that have mm -hmm. spoken up for the far right? Well, you just played a little clip where you had Nigel Farage defending the far right. When did he defend? When has he ever defended the far right? He finds the far right right despicable. Uh, he is a mainstream politician. He's the leader of a political party that's just earned 4.1 million votes at the general election. He just gave an explanation for why he has sympathy with them. Well, do you think, uh, Dr. Candia, that people are right to be angry about illegal immigration or current levels of legal net migration? I think what we're all right to be angry about is that three children were killed and blaming Muslims by attacking mosques yes. is completely an exploitation of that horrible event. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. what we should be angry about. Absolutely. You're, you're quite right on that one. Harry Tangi, uh, what do you think about this story and uh, about uh, Sakia Starmer's position on the riots? Oh, he let a good uh, good chance go, didn't he, really? Um, I don't think he's helped the police at all. Uh, I think he's been part of the major problem because what he's said is that this whole thing is all about yobs and thuggery and there's no message behind it. They've just got... They just want to demolish towns and throw bricks at cops. Now, let's get this straight, first of all. I was in the police for 30 years. These are my friends and colleagues. Don't throw bricks at my cops, thank yes. you very much. Yeah. I, 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 uh, I'm very fond of them. It is not them who makes the decisions, it's the politicians and it's their bosses. And if you think there's two-tier policing, it's not the frontline cops that make those decisions. Leave them alone. They're just normal family men and women, yeah. many of which probably have sympathies with you. Now, we've got three quarters of a million of, of, of net immigration into this country every year from the Tories and Labour seem to be, according to those masses out there, relaxing the whole thing of this. Now, if you have a lot more unvetted young men in the country from different cultures, I think everyone must agree, statistically speaking, you're going to get a lot more crime because they're not all vetted. So you don't know who they are. And they drive past these plumbers and electricians drive past huge hotels with people. I've done it myself. And they're in new tracksuits, mobile phones. They're all men. 
And they think, well, I'm paying for those and I can't I can't heat the house. I can't put food on the table. And so they, they're turning to the mainstream media. Forget it. No impartiality whatsoever. They're told they're, ex- they're far right. They're turning to the government and they're voting. And they see there's the voting system is completely unfair. They see this two tier policing because the bosses and the politicians are too afraid to deal with people who are a different colour. Look, let me make this clear. My girlfriend, who is the sweetest, lovely, most gentle person in the world, is a Muslim. She's Arab Muslim. And so and I'm thinking you've got to listen to the bigger picture out there. This thuggery is the is the is the is the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot of people who aren't into Mm. violence. They don't want to go on these violent marches, but you always get the tip that shines through. But the message is still there. And he ignored it. Indeed, and I Harry. think you, you, you didn't answer my question, Dr. Candia. I asked you whether it was reasonable for people to be angry about illegal immigration, which is currently costing the country £8 million a day in accommodation costs alone, and legal net migration of 700,000 in a year. That's a, a town about the size of Leeds annually. Are people right, and is it understandable, or at least, that they're angry about it? Look, I'm, I'm up for a grown-up conversation about immigration. Second time you haven't answered my question. Issues. I'm up for that conversation. But look, these, these riots are in response to a dreadful attack in Southport. That should be the centre of this just conversation. It's just, and look, I want to say, Harry, I'm, I'm so grateful for your service as a police officer. And I'm seeing brave police officers get caught in the middle of it. Okay. The families of the victims do not want this violence. They are not being honoured. That These three girls that have been killed, they are not being honoured by this. In fact, the other children who were uh, from that community are more scared by the riots than the attack. And, and, and on that, on that yeah. we can agree. Uh, Dr Candia, thank you so much for joining us. A fascinating conversation. That is uh, Dr Chris Candia, the director of the Sanctuary Foundation and former police sergeant Harry Tangi. A fascinating debate. Of course, uh, opinions split on this. But what do you think? Well, 91 percent of you agree that the prime minister did not address the British people's concerns. Nine percent disagree.